Today we're pouring a concrete slab for a house. Now this is part one. Part two will be us finishing this. So make sure you subscribe and come on back to watch part two. Now a couple things. First of all, the concrete slab is eight inches thick. And I want to know if you guys think that's a little overkill just for a basic house concrete slab. Second thing is the homeowner formed up and did all the prep work here. He did the gravel work. He did the foreman. Uh, and then he had he had his uh, heating guy come in and do the styrofoam and the radiant heat tubes and then he tied in you know what little rebar match you see in here the heating guys did the wire mesh under the tubes because they like to tie their tubes right to the right to the wire mesh and they like it really really neat as you can see so I want to know a couple things from you guys you know how do you think this homeowner did getting all this prepped the way he did for us and then do you think the eight inch thick slab is a little overkill? Normally for a house slab like this with radiant heat, we would pour about a, a five or a six inch slab for most of it in the middle. And then right around the edges, it would be about 12 to 16 inches thick on the edges. So this guy just wanted to do it a little different. He just figured, well, I'm just gonna go eight inches through the whole thing. And I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, frost we live in Maine so freeze and thaw isn't going to be an issue because the slab is going to be heated and then he'll keep after he strips the forms actually yeah after he strips the forms he'll put styrofoam up the outside edge of the slab too to keep the heat from coming out <laughs> as you can see right there the the concrete driver had part of the part of some hard concrete break off the inside of his drum on the fins and then he took it off the belt before it got into the very end where the boot is and clogged the boot. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. This is late in the fall as the temperatures start getting colder and they start adding hot water to the trucks. Sometimes the hot water will, will break off some hard chunks of concrete inside the drum. You can see uh, Luke just threw out another little piece right there. <laughs> he's picking them out as, he's, as we're pouring. But anyway... You know, comment down below what you think about the thickness of the slab and how well you think the guy did getting it prepped. Um, I mean, we do a lot of the prep work ourselves on a lot of these slabs. This guy's actually a builder, so he builds really, really nice houses. Now where you see the concrete truck backed in was the only point of access we had for this slab. That's why we had to start with a conveyor truck. That conveyor will reach about 40 feet. You can see it, he can telescope that in and out about 10 feet. Just made the access, made the pouring a little bit easier. It's quite a bit less expensive than getting a pump. 
So we decided we'd get uh, the 10 yards off this truck with a conveyor and then we could reach the rest just from a regular rear end dump with maybe adding a little extension chute on you'll see here in a minute. We don't have this company we're pouring with Haley's doesn't have any front dumps from the location that we're getting the concrete from today. From their other plants in different parts of the state they do have front dumps so if we're pouring further away from the shop or whatever we can get some front dumps from this company if we need them. The, the mix we're pouring, we're pouring a 4,000 PSI mix. It's got water reducer in it, so we can pour a pretty loose slump with the water reducer and not have to add water to get the concrete nice and loose. And we're just wet setting the rebar around the edges. That way we tap it down about two or three inches from the top, get it to where we want it as far as the level, and then and that's just the way we keep the rebar from sitting on the bottom when we do a slab like this. There's a bunch of different ways you can add the rebar, but this is the way that we do it on most of these slabs. Now we're screeding part of this. As you can see, we had a we got a uh, power screed here today, a vibrating screed right there, right in front of you from MBW. We're going to use that on most of the slab, but on some parts of it, you know, we'll just hand screed. We'll hand screed our our wet pads using the just the regular magnesium screed, and then. The rest of it will use the battery operated screed to do that. So the second truck, you can see the access a little bit better at this angle. We could get him back that far and then we had to hook on. That's about an eight foot extension chute we hooked on. And from here we just decided, you know, we got a 12 footer, we got a 16 footer we could have hooked on. We just decided that's one of the reasons we use water reducer is so we can pour this slump. So we can pull it around quite a bit easier and you know we can dump out quite a bit of concrete really fast by having the slump up to about you know a six or a seven with a water reducer a lot of people think I pour wet concrete it's really not wet if that water reducer wasn't in it if the concrete company doesn't add the water reducer at the batch plant the same concrete without the water reducer would be about a three or a four inch slump so then you add the you know it's about 15 ounces of water reducer per yard and it loosens it up to a slump like this. And that's, you know, be, there's only three of us, so we use, we pour concrete every day. That's why we use the water reducer, pay a little bit extra for it, but for us, it's definitely worth it. All right, so this truck's empty. What we like to do, the three of us, is we like to just dump one truck right completely out, you know, basically just get it dumped out and then screed it. Because this slab is so much thicker than a lot of the other ones we pour, we're actually kind of pouring two trucks out before we get anything screeded. And I don't know, it's just a little bit of experience plays into this. We know how long a time we got before the concrete starts to set up. We know how fast we can get it screeded. Um, you know, the first truck really didn't go far enough. It didn't fill up enough for us to really get the concrete screeded without it sagging a little bit on the edge. So we decided just to dump out 20 yards of concrete right here and then get our pad screeded. Now, what we're doing here is we're just using our 14 foot magnesium screed. I got all these tools listed down below too in the description if you want to check out these tools and maybe get some of them for yourself. But that's a 14 foot magnesium screed. We got sizes from four feet all the way up to 14 feet in two foot increments. And then, you know, we're using the, the battery operated power screed. We're using a magnesium bull float and those concrete come alongs. We call them come alongs. Some guys call them rakes, but I mean, really what they are is come-alongs. 
you can see Luke is now getting the screed and you know basically that I mean that thing weighs about 35 pounds it's pretty lightweight you can uh, crank the handle you can crank the vibration way up if you want we usually run it at about mid vibration so about mid speed and just basically let it do the work and let the guy raking the concrete behind you do the work just watching our ends make sure our ends are scoring going nice and easy without stopping and starting is you is the process that works best for us and we can get a slab like this screeded pretty quickly and you can see two guys can do two guys can really do the screed and if you've got a guy raking the concrete that knows what he's doing behind you and he can keep it from getting low but also keep it from being too high that's going to make sure you got a nice flat slab and then as you can see I'm kind of coming right behind him just getting the bull floating done third trucks over there he's kind of mixing up getting to the slump we want making sure everything's good there so when we get done what we're doing we can back him right in and just get going that's what makes pouring concrete fast you know it takes not only the guys pouring it knowing what they're doing but having some good concrete truck drivers that kind of can see your process that kind of know how you work know the slumps you like pouring and they can get all their shoots on be ready for you be ready to back into where you want them after you get done and you're and you're ready for them Now this is how it's done right here. Two guys that really know how to rake the concrete and then one guy that really knows how to run a vibrating power screed like this. This is what it should look like right here if you're trying to wonder, you know, if you could do this, what it should look like as you're doing it, how fast you should go. The two guys raking the concrete, Darren's on the left, that's me on the right, on your right as you're looking at it. This is, this is how you should be working right here. I mean, non-stop pushing and pulling the concrete, making sure that the level behind that screed is just right. And then the guy actually doing the screeding's job is really easy.
All right, so we're down to the last truck, basically the balance load. So the first three trucks were 10 yards. We got, I think, five yards on this one, 35 yards. Looks like we're gonna have plenty to do it. Now, if you've watched the video this far, uh, you're, you're either you really, really like watching concrete videos or you like the types of videos I do, or maybe you're trying to learn how to do concrete like we do. Now, if that's the case, if you're trying to learn how to concrete like we do, um, down in the description, look for the Concrete Underground. Uh, click on that link and it'll take you to my webpage where my online training is. And then you can join that and you can learn from us. You know, me, Darren, and Luke are in there. And I'm teaching you how to do concrete like we do. All the different types of concrete that we do. Not just pouring slabs like this, but finishing concrete, doing broom finishes, patio, sidewalks, pool decks, stamp concrete. Uh, concrete repair is in there doing epoxy coating so there's multiple different skills and techniques in there that I'm trying to teach everybody and then you know you can you can join that it's a monthly program you can pay you can stay for one month you can stay for a year and I mean you can stop and start whenever you want so definitely check that out if you want to learn how to do concrete that's down in the description and we're gonna finish this up and you know when we get this finished up this probably took us about an hour to pour, honestly, maybe maybe a little over an hour because it was four trucks. Um, we're going to have, I don't know, maybe an hour or more to sit and wait before the finishing starts. So the finishing, I'll show you that video. That's going to be part two. So make sure you subscribe and come on back so you can see just how we finish this. You know, how kind of like how a day goes with pouring and finishing concrete. And... That's a good, another good way to just see just what we kind of do on days where we just pour and finish concrete floors. And it depends on the time of year too. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting anchor bolts in so he can bolt his first plate down. This is what he wants. He wants them sticking up about two to two and a half inches. He's putting a two by six plate down there. So I'm getting it right in right about where the middle of that plate would be and I'm putting them as far apart as he wanted me to. And if he wants to drill in uh, any more in between this, then he can do that. But this will at least get his, you can kind of see a little bit better how close they are right there. But this is how we finish. So make sure you come on back and check out part two, guys.